Thank you. Neck-breaking. Beautiful. It's so romantic. <laughs> mm. Maybe if we had made it here on our honeymoon, we'd still be together. You think? We better unpack. Listen, why don't you take this room? Why? Well, it's, you know, it's bigger. It's got more closet room, and there's this view. <laughs> it's, it's not necessary. Please, I insist. Well, if it'll make you happy. Oh, it will. It will. You want to have a drink? Um, well, don't we have to be at the convention center in half an hour? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, uh, you know, make the switch. Yes. Excuse me, Mrs. Thorpe. Miss von Halkine asked me to get her a copy of the quarterly report. Tell Miss von Halkine she can drop dead. I beg your pardon? Quarterly reports are reserved for important personnel, not parasites. She is the vice president, though, isn't she? That's what she likes to call it. It doesn't carry any weight with me. Well, what should I tell her? You can tell Miss von Halkine that... What? Now, Alexandra? I don't think you quite understand. I am going to clear Philip's name. I don't care what it takes. If I drag you down in the process, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Oh, I bet you would. And Alan Michael might be a little hurt to find out that you lied about your pregnancy, but it is certainly not going to kill him. What about Mom? How will she feel knowing that you deliberately tried to destroy my one shot at happiness? No, I don't think you'd hurt her or Alan Michael. Blake? What are you doing here? portion of Guiding Light is presented by Play School. Parents look to us for the best fun for their children from crib through preschool. What's going on? I'm just delivering a message to Ross from my mother. She can't call him herself? She forgot to tell him that she wanted me to change the oil in her car while she was gone. So I came by to get the keys. I'll probably need the garage keys, too. Stop it, Blake. Stop what? I know why you're here. Ross called you over to talk about Philip's case. No. Oh, come on. You know that I gave him the telegram. Vanessa, I don't want to disturb Josh, but it's important that I talk to him. Well, I'm sorry. It's going to have to wait. Now, Josh asked me over here today because he needs some help. Did he open up to you about Reva? No. No, that's not why he asked me over. Vanessa, have you seen that bedroom? No. Why? You don't understand what's going on Now, wait on a minute. There. Now, wait a minute. You don't understand. You don't understand your employer. He's a very private person. He's not given to public displays of emotion. I don't call confiding in your sister-in-law a public display. And you don't have to act like I'm some kind of a moron. People from Fifth Street don't air their dirty laundry in public either. You know what? I hardly consider Joshua's emotional state right now dirty laundry. It's just... 
He's grieving for his wife, and he does not want to do it in public. But don't you think that it's better to get these things out in the open? It's not good to keep them bottled up inside of you. Well, I don't know. Maybe for some people, but not for Joshua. Now, he's made that clear. And you and I have to respect his wishes. You have no idea what's going on here. Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Hi. Come on in. Oh, oh get back with Vanessa. So with Hawk being at the amusement park with Mara, I didn't have anybody to help me. <laughs> Sarah, what are you doing here? Well, that's why Josh needed my help to uh, help Sarah settle in. You're moving in? Yes. You just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you? Won't do you any good to complain to Joshua. He's the one who asked me to move in. He's finally turning to family. Gary Lambert, please meet your party. Eliminated relic wearing. Gary Lambert, please meet your party. We don't like a lot of racy kind of talk in Iowa, you know. Oh, we don't either. And, and Nadine is very old-fashioned. <laughs> And, and very sensitive to the viewer's needs. And we don't allow anything objectionable on the air. The love bug is strictly G-rated. Is it going to get real mushy? Well, you know, Homer, I, I think of that as romantic. And you know, the average female viewer, 18 to 34, that is what she most frequently asks for. True. Uh, well, let me run it by my general manager. By all means, come back to us. Thanks. You dragged me down to Mexico for this. What did you expect, cocktails by the pool? Well, I'll tell you what I... I... <laughs> I'll tell you what I expected. I expected an auditorium, maybe a crowd of people that I could address. You're not the president of Spalding here. You're an investor with a product to sell. If you're expecting me to act like a used car salesman, you can forget it. Oh, come on. Can't you fake being charming for a few hours? No. I'll see you back at the hotel. Hi there. What's the love bug all about? Oh, Roger, hours, why don't you tell uh, Moselle no, here all about our show? Your money. Yeah, Raj. Show me what you're about. Well, uh, Moselle, I think this is going to be your kind of show, and I'll tell you why. Because it's all about love. Oh. I just don't know what to do with my empty suitcase. Oh, wait, let me find out from Josh. Just a minute. Josh? One second, please. Uh, Sarah just wants to know what she should do with her empty suitcases. She can just, uh, <clears throat> uh, they'll go up in the attic. I'll, uh, I'll take care of it myself later. Okay, thanks. The room's kind of a mess right now. Oh, all right. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just, uh, taking a nap. Oh, well, I'll tell, uh, Sarah that we have to be a little, a little bit more quiet. in there. Nobody is. I see. Yeah. I guess that must make a lot of sense to you private people. Oh, Michael, I know we discussed this, but I can't believe this. My own husband is turning on me. I'm not turning on you, but if you have evidence that could clear Philip's name, you have to tell Ross. Why is everyone so crazy about this? Philip is dead. So he doesn't matter? Well, it's not like we can save him. Blake, is that why you're holding back? Because Philip is dead? I'm not holding back. Philip's life was ruined by false accusations. We owe it to him to clear it. What good would that do? Philip didn't kill Neil. That means that somebody else did. Somebody who, who ended my brother's life, and they're going to pay for it. So what does this have to do with me? You tell me, and I promise I'll do everything that I can to protect you. Alan Michael, I didn't do anything. I don't need to be protected. You need protection from the person who sent that telegram. Blake, who sent it? I told you, I don't know. She knows it was Gary Swanson. Is that 
true? No, that is crazy. A few minutes ago, I dragged her kicking and screaming from Gary's hotel room. I told you that I had to leave a message for Indy about Spalding business. Blake, what has he got on you? Nothing! Then why is it every time I see you two together, you're arguing? That is enough. I will not stand here and be grilled like a common criminal. I deserve a little respect, if not from this lawyer, at least from my own husband. Hi, Blake. I come at a bad time? No, no, I'm, I'm not leaving. Alan, Michael, good luck, but... Uh, I don't think you're gonna get very far with Blake. Well, there's one thing that I haven't tried yet. Would you uh, excuse us for a moment? Certainly. I'll need you for dictation in ten minutes. And here I'd hoped seeing you at the country club the other night was just a horrible nightmare. Oh, you knew better than that. I have the office right down the hall. Oh, right. The one with asbestos problems. <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't run into each other before this. Why? You're never here. But we do have to talk now. About severance, Faye, I hope. Actually, I am chock full of ideas about how to run things more efficiently around here. You're full of something, all right, but I don't want it spread all over my company. Ooh, now, now, Alex. Let's put aside our petty differences and try to work for the common good. You're working for your own good, and you are common. Face the facts. I am a vice president for a reason, and you're stuck with me. Now, you could make it hard. Or you could make it easy. Your father would be ashamed of you. Don't talk to me about my father. He died penniless and alone, thanks to you. Thanks to me, Leo kept a roof over his head. His drinking and gambling took care of the rest. Do not even dare to try to disgrace my father's name. Give it a rest, okay? I like your father, in spite of himself. Leo was a decent man. It would shame him deeply to see his only daughter take advantage of my family's tragedy for personal gain. I am only doing what I have seen you do over the years, Alexandra. Take advantage of an opponent's weakness. I am certainly not responsible for the Spalding suffering. After everything you did to Philip? <laughs> Which I have more than made up for by risking my neck to assure him time alone with his beloved Beth. When? Recently. Is he back in the States? You want to know where? Yes. Start making my life a little easier. I'll think about telling you. Is he all right, Indy? Is he safe? Oh, for heaven's sake, when will everybody stop worrying about Philip? Here you are. We'll continue with part two of Guiding Light in a moment. Gary, what are you doing here? I came by to pick up India. The secretary said you were in here. You'll have to excuse me, Alexandra. I promised Gary dinner. I'm sure Gary won't mind if I detain you a few more minutes, will you, Gary? No, not at all. Um, I'll just go wait in your office, okay? Why don't you just meet me at the Blue Moon? I'll see you there later. Okay. Now, tell me about Philip. He's fine. Eating like a horse. Doing his exercises, pining away for Beth as usual. I'm surprised you don't know any of this. Why would I? Just thought you might have heard. Have you spoken to Roger? No. But I gather from your question that you and your charming husband are having a communication problem. My problem? is you. And I thought you would have learned how to treat a husband by now. My personal life is none of your business. Mercifully. But your business is my business. Temporarily. Oh, not really. Y you see, even if I do leave your employ, which I can't even possibly 
think about at this point. You still owe me my share of spoiling stock. Don't hold your breath. Or better yet, do. Blue's your best color. You think so? Mm-mm. <laughs> Don't put me off too long, Alexandra. Not if you want to see Philip again. Little Mosey. She's named after me, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, my husband's dead, by the way. Anyway, poor little Mosey just got rid of hair lice. Can you imagine washing that long hair every day? My daughter thought she'd go crazy. She blew out two blow dryers. Do you have children? Yes, I have a daughter. But no grandkids, right? I can't uh, see anyone calling you Gramps. <laughs> Oh, well, this is... How do you like a love bug? I like it. I could see myself selling it. But I'll have to think about it. Why, sure. Good. Come back and talk to us real soon. Oh, don't worry. I won't forget you, honey. <laughs> I want to go home now. What's the matter? Didn't you like a nice grandmother looking at you like you have no clothes on? I'm leaving now. <laughs> Oh, wait, I have to give you your convention hat. My what? Convention hat's real cute. Uh, like a Shriner's hat with mouse ears. <laughs> Listen, there's not enough money in the world to get me to wear a hat. <laughs> What's so funny? There's no hat. You thought I told you there was a skunk on the wall. Don't start about the skunk. I really am allergic to them. Oh, okay? Skunks and convention hats. Yeah. You're making fun of me. What? Me? You? <laughs> nah, hey. Hey. <laughs> Nah, whoa, whoa, ha. You know, for a moment there, I could have sworn you didn't hate me. Oh, I must have forgotten about that. Well, that's the nicest thing you said to me in months. No, to get too carried away, I'm sure we'll be back in the trenches before too long. Yeah, Hi. Sure. Hi. Which one of you wants to tell me about the love bug? Uh, hey, I'd be happy to. Come right over here and let me introduce you to our hostess, Nadine Cooper. It's the only way that you're free of him. What is Shane doing up? Well, I heard him cooing in his room, and he said he wanted to play with his grandma. Well, really, Sarah, he should be napping for at least another half hour. Oh, well, you don't need any more sleep, do you? No. No. You and I just have to get to know each other better. It's more important for that. No, I think it's more important that he sticks to a schedule. <laughs> I was going to wait till tomorrow, but I think that this won't wait. What? I don't want to fight with you, Harley. Honest, I don't. Because I truly believe that we're interested in the same thing. The welfare of Reva's babies. And I'm going to try my best to get along with you. Well, I don't want to fight with you either, Sarah. But I'm just saying that I think it's confusing for Mara and Shane if they're getting mixed messages from different adults who are obviously competing for the same job. Well, there's a real simple solution. Don't compete. Well, uh, I think I better be going on home now. Oh, well, who's taking care of little Billy? Oh, okay, well, let me take... he's got a babysitter. You know, he uh, knows. That's all that. right. No, I don't mind. All right. <laughs> you have a nice sleep. Well, nice thank sleep. you for coming by and helping me settle in. Oh, of course. You're welcome. How's Billy doing? Uh, well... Well, he and I are going through a, a rough patch right now. Oh. Well, I'm sure you'll work it out together. We'll see you soon. What? I just don't understand people who can't face the truth. You know something about Billy? Well, he's going through a little bit more than a rough patch right now. He's in real big trouble. He refuses to admit it, and so does Vanessa. He's drinking again, isn't he? I knew it. Well, you know, even Dylan tried to talk to him, but he denies that he has a problem. 
What a shame. Billy is one of the best people I know. He's got a heart as big as all outdoors. He and Reba were a lot alike that way. Yeah. Darn near killed him when Reba died. But how do you help someone who refuses to admit that they have a problem? I don't know. There's no one better than Billy when he's sober. But when he's drinking, he's not worth the spit it takes to shine a shoe. <laughs> I have never heard someone talk about Billy like that. <laughs> well, he's not sacred to me. I helped raise him. I love that boy to death, but he's not perfect, not by a long shot. Oh, yeah. That's the truth. I should, uh, I should change Shane. I'll just be upstairs for a minute, okay? Do you want to bring you All up? right. Ooh. Oh, home again. Oh, Mara, honey. Oh, look at that big bear. Oh, yeah, Grandpa Whitley. At Funland. Oh, yeah? Well, I bet you did, and I want to hear all about it. <laughs> My favorite ride was a roller coaster. Ah. But Grandpa got scared. Oh, no, I was just oh, pretending oh, oh, oh. to be scared. <laughs> what you doing here? I thought you'd be home cooking dinner by now. Well, I am cooking. Here. Why? Our stove broke? Nope. I just moved in. Hello? It's, it's all falling apart. You gotta get out of town. Blake? What are you talking about? Ross and Alan Michael know you sent me the telegram. They're on to us. They saw it? They have it. How do they know it's mine? I, I don't know. Ross has a source. Uh, at least it wasn't signed. Uh, it could be a bluff. You didn't admit anything, did you? No, I didn't tell them a anything, but they know I'm lying. Gary, you've got to split before it all falls apart. Let them suspect what they want. The only way things are going to fall apart, and that's if you crack. And honey, if you do... Your husband's a dead man. What do you mean, moved in? Well, Joshua asked me, and, and I couldn't say no. Did it ever occur to you to ask me what I thought about it? Grandma, I know what I want to be for Halloween. A bride. Oh, well, that's nice, sweetie. I'll whip you up a dress. Now, why don't we go look in my sewing basket and see what we can find? Not so fast. Uh, Harley, uh, Sarah and I need to have a word in private. Sure. Hey, Mara, come on. Let's go upstairs and talk about what you did today. Okay, but I know I want to be a bride for Halloween. That is so cool. You know, we'll run by that secondhand dress shop and pick up something later, okay? Okay, that's great. That's why I moved in. Imagine wanting to go out and spend money on a costume when I can make one for nothing. I've got a sneaky suspicion Josh can afford it. That's not the point. Joshua called me. And he asked me to move in. Now, he just can't depend on Harley. Looks like to me she's doing a fine job. I just spent the whole day with Mara, and she never stops singing Harley's praises. She loves that girl. Well, nobody's saying that she can't stay. I, I just want to get this house back in shape. Uh, hey, what about our house? Now, who's going to see to that while you're over here playing Grandma? Well, you're moving in, too. What? Well, you don't think I would leave you home by yourself, do you? Well, thank you for asking me what I want. Hawk, our grandbabies need us. They need to spend time with us. They don't need us hovering over them every minute. Now, Joshua asked me to do this. Well, I'll be happy to talk to him about no, it. No, don't you dare. Sarah, I don't say no to you often, but this is one time when I have to. Well, and we have a problem, don't we? Because I am staying right here. Is the coat 
coast clear? I just came down to get her dolls. Uh, the coast is real clear. Probably will be for quite a while. Do you guys have a fight, Hawk? I hope it wasn't about me. God, uh, no. Sarah thinks it is, but it's not. It's about Reva. It's always about Reva. I, I, I understand why she moved in here, and she's convinced herself it's so all fired important for the kids. She's really just Mrs. Reva. And she know I do too. Hawk. I know you guys are hurting really bad. Ah, oh, don't worry about me. I'm actually more worried about Josh. What's wrong with him? Well, he shut himself down. He refuses to move on. He stays locked in the past. He won't let me change a thing in this house. He wants it to stay exactly the way Reva left it. Oh, Harley, I wish I knew what to tell you, but... Josh hadn't exactly confided in me much lately. Well, I don't think he's confiding in anybody lately. I think he feels like he needs to go through this himself. I bet Reba never would have left up. She, she'd known what a mess we were going to make out of everything. <laughs> well, she was a pretty smart lady. <laughs> well, I guess I better go uh, try to make peace with Sarah. <laughs> well, yell if you need anything. I may end up yelling, period. <laughs> dumb or she is dumb but she wouldn't bring in the cops she's obviously lying finding her outside of gary's hotel room was as good as an admission true but short of torture which i think may be appropriate in blake's case i don't know how to make her talk maybe Alan michael can get through to her well he wasn't doing very well while they were here but uh, when they're alone maybe he'll do better what if you bring Gary here and put him on the spot? I thought of that, but I think it's better not to let him know that we're on to him, at least until we have to. And maybe he'll let something slip? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. How'd you get here today, anyway? Oh, my nurse dropped me off. You have good handicap access. Oh, good. How are things going at home? They're going? Yeah. I know that you're keeping up with your studies at home, but do you miss, att miss attending classes at the university? Uh, not as much as I thought I would. I've been so busy with Philip's case that I really haven't had time. How's therapy? Okay. Uh, I got a new brace. It's supposed to keep my spine straight. Yeah, Justin tells me that your workouts are very difficult. Daddy exaggerates. No, now who are you kidding? I know you're... You're putting your all out for this, and I'm proud of you. And Philip would be, too. I haven't done anything more than I've had to. <laughs> okay. You be modest if you want to. But, Sammy, I know what you've been up against. And not many people could handle it the way you have. Will you stop? No, I won't. In fact, Holly and I were just talking the other day about uh, how brave we think you are. Well, Holly's just being nice. She doesn't really know. In a way, she does. Holly's had to overcome a lot, too. You mean about the rape? She wasn't physically handicapped, but... emotionally, it just took years to get over it. But she did it. Yes. Although she said there were many days when she just felt like giving up. But she knew she had to continue fighting, and she did. And the miracle of it is she got beyond what Roger did to her, and today she's healthier and happier than she's ever been. <laughs> that 
wasn't too Moselle. bad, was it? Yeah, it was bad. You owe me big time. Oh, what beautiful flowers. Thank you. I didn't send them. Oh, it's from Blake, isn't that sweet? Mm. I get it. Oh, no, I better do it. Oh, sorry. Hello? Oh, Ross. I, I, I was expecting you to call. Uh, just a second, okay? I'll see you in the morning. Uh, you hungry? Uh, uh yeah, I guess. Want to catch something to eat downstairs? Sure, why not? Okay, I'll, uh, I'll come back for you in about half an hour. Okay, fine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you were good. I saw Perkins. He was in the, the airport and the hotel lobby. I didn't see him today in the convention center, but I guess he was there somewhere. I, I meant, how is it going with Roger? I, I guess it's fine. He, uh, he just asked me to go out with him to dinner. Really? <sighs> really. He, he seemed uh, pleased that I accepted. Well, good. Um, you know, just keep me posted on developments. I will. Oh, I am fine, but uh, I'm not so sure about you. I couldn't be better. You lie. Oh, you do it very well, but you can never get away with it with me. Is it India? No. Well, she's part of it. I thought so. I just passed her in the hall, looking like the proverbial cat who'd swallowed the canary. Don't worry, India's a temporary thorn in our sides. I'll take care of her. Mm. Good, but she is not the only problem that Spaulding's been saddled with since Roger took over. Ah, so this is about Roger. Yes, yes, it is. Now, I have avoided this discussion, knowing how sensitive it is, but I can't ignore it any longer. He makes her a vice president, and then he disappears, leaving us to contend with her. Yes, well... Well, and according to Alan Michael, he has now gone off to Acapulco, not on company business. How long are you going to let this go on? Actually, I encouraged Roger to go to Acapulco. What on earth for? Well, I, I know he's turned out to be a mixed blessing for Spaulding, and I wanted some time alone to decide how best to proceed if things don't improve. And? I've come up with a plan that may solve the problem if it proves necessary. Well, good. Uh, can I be of help? No, dear, you have to trust me on this one. It may be very personal. I know how difficult this must be for you, feeling the way you do about him. That may be changing, too. Well, I, I'm sorry to hear. No, no, that's not exactly true. I've been hoping for some long while that you'd finally realize what Roger Thorpe is really like, and what you're dealing with. Well, he hasn't proved to be anything yet. He will. So I've heard. Alex, this plan, I hope you are being careful. I am. Good, because Roger Thorpe is a dangerous man. If crossed, he could easily become violent. Hi, how'd it go? Oh, fine. There have been some early trick-or-treaters, but I haven't heard a peep out of little Billy since I got here. No, I'm not surprised. It's that darn video game. Now, I've tried everything I can think of to get him away from it. It just doesn't work. How much do I owe you? Ten. You weren't gone as long as I thought you would be. Oh. Well, okay. Here you are. All right. Thank you so much. Right. I'll see you on Friday. Okie dokie. Bye, Amy. Bye-bye.
know how you feel about Roger. But he's not as violent as people seem to think. I've lived with the man for over a year now. He's always been a gentleman. Mm, that merely means that he's become shrewder. You're worried about nothing. Ah, ah. People may change a little here and there. But essentially, deep down, they remain the same. I'm not trying to minimize what happened all those years ago, but don't you think part of your concern stems from Rogers outmaneuvering you? Oh, I'm sure it does. But when you have to deal with a person like that, you finally accept the unacceptable. Now, I'd managed to forget what he did to his first wife. I read it in the papers. What did the papers say? She got to the hospital, black and blue. He'd beaten her brutally. He'd almost killed her. I, I, I'm sorry I've upset you, dear. But I want you to know the kind of man you're dealing with. I, I, do, I do. Alex. May I take you to dinner? Try to make up to you for frightening you this way. Yes, you may. I could use some company tonight. Shall we dress? Oh, oh yes, fine. I've been looking everywhere for you. Why? So you can accuse me some more, humiliate me? I tried to talk to you, but you wouldn't tell me anything. Because there's nothing to tell. Why don't you believe me? Because it doesn't add up. Look, I know that you dumped Gary for me. And I know that there's still something going on between you two. No, that's not true. Then what went on at the Blue Moon the other night? Nothing. Gary just wanted to know how I was. He did help rescue you down in Costa Verde, or did you forget about that? No, I didn't. You're just letting Ross put all these crazy ideas in your head. They're not crazy. He's obsessed with pinning Neil's death on someone else. He is obsessed with clearing Philip's name, and so am I. Blake, if you know something and you don't help us, I'll never forgive you. How many times do I have to tell you I don't know anything? Until I believe it. Look, maybe I'm not making myself clear enough here. Our marriage is at stake. I'm only going to ask you this one more time. If you lie, and I find out about it, we're finished. busy right now. If you need something, ask Sarah, all right? You're not busy, Josh. And I don't want to talk to Sarah. I want to talk to you. Joshua, Vanessa's on the phone. Something's awful wrong. Uh, 
Vanessa? Little Billy's gone. What? Well, I've looked everywhere. I can't find him. He's just disappeared. All right, just, just sit tight. I'll, I'll be there as soon as I can. worry about. I don't really have to do anything, really. Just enough. Just enough to prove to Alex that he would, he would betray her. Uh, just a second. watches by guests, leather goods by coach. Be sure to be with us tomorrow for another full hour of Guiding Light.